Welcome to Fiscal Integrity Group, your ticket to bookkeeping greatness. Welcome to Fiscal Integrity Group and our webinar called Steps in Starting Your Own Bookkeeping Business. First of all, I want to congratulate you even if you're just thinking about taking your first step. This webinar is all about helping you through the research stage. But before we start, I have one question for you. Consider how big do you want to grow? Do you want to have sales in your first year of 50,000 or 100,000? Well, I'm actually hoping you're thinking of more than 50,000. But what about as you grow your business, 200,000 in sales, maybe 500,000 in sales? Do any of you have delusions of grandeur right now that you want to do a million dollars in sales? No matter what you're thinking now, as time goes on, you may have opportunities that will present themselves that are too good to turn down. It all depends if you wish to stay as a one-person business or eventually want to hire staff so you can grow as large as you want. There is room for each and every one of you to get started down this path. So let's take a look at what I want to cover in this knowledge nugget. One of the main items I want to focus on with this webinar is the pros and cons of being in business. It is completely a different world from being an employee to a business owner. And I want you to fully understand the step you're about to make. But if you were really gung-ho to make it, then let's get you started. What are the basics that you need to get yourself set up and heading out to find clients? Next, anyone in business, any smart, successful person that's been in business has a strategy and you need to have one as well. You have to put your strategy in writing and look at it from time to time so you can tweak it. And what your strategy is are things like your expected sales for the first year. Who are you going to align yourself with when it comes to referral partners? How are you going to go about getting clients? And who are the ideal clients? And these are the things that you have to think about. Business is always tough, so we have to throw some fun stuff into it. So the first thing you want to do when you're starting a business is start presenting or branding yourself. So the fun stuff is, is picking your colors, having someone help you design a logo, design the website, and put all that content together so you can present yourself very professionally out on the internet. And the last thing I'm going to cover is your setup. And that would be, where is your office? Are you going to be out of your home or are you going to be a storefront? And how many computers do you think you need? How many programs that you're going to have to set up? All that sort of stuff because once you have your clients, now it's about servicing them. Let's look at the positive side of being in business. So you're thinking about being in business and you're going to take that step that I want you to understand you are officially a business owner and an entrepreneur and you have to think like one. If you're going to make this step actually, in my opinion, goody for you. I've been in business now for 15 or 16 years and when I look back at that decision, I don't regret it at all. And the reason is, quite frankly, I'm in charge of my own destiny. And when you're successful, and it's not going to be right away because it's going to be tough in the beginning. But when you are successful, then you are reaping the rewards of that success. You're scheduling your own time. You're booking vacations when you want to and as many as you wish. And of course, you get to reap the rewards of a positive bottom line. It's all yours. Well, it's all yours after taxes to the government. The other thing as a bookkeeper, I found... Once I was a professional bookkeeper, I found the respect was a hell of a lot higher than it was as if I was an employee. I also got to charge more. So I had a professional rate and I also paid myself well because I deserved it. And once you're in business, you deserve it as well. So the pros are you get to set your own schedule. You can work for home if you wish, and you can even be in your bunny slippers, but you can be in control of your own destiny. 
And one last item before I move on to the cons of being in business. This is strictly for the bookkeeping industry, and I don't think it really matters where you live uh, in the world, but there are hundreds of business owners looking to find and trust great bookkeepers. If you are a great bookkeeper, then you should not have too much trouble finding clients. Okay, for the negative side of being in business, and it is really the exact opposite of the positive side. You have to stand your ground from the get-go. It is very important you think like a business person and not only as a bookkeeper. You must set your business framework to ensure some of your clients don't walk all over you. And this is very common in the bookkeeping industry. There are business owners out there who think the world revolves around them and everyone else must jump when asked to. Does that sound familiar? Does it sound like uh, your employer? Maybe that's the reason why you want to get into your own business. So once you've started your business, set your business hours and stick to them because you need to. Why? Because you have to protect your personal space. It is too easy to lose your current lifestyle to hours and hours of business work. Next thing on the list, demand respect. State your hourly rate and don't drop it for a cheap client. It isn't worth it in the end. If somebody's arguing your rate, I can guarantee you they're going to be a problem client. Bookkeeping takes time and you need to allow yourself enough time to perform the services and look after your own business. Don't take on too many clients all at once. I know that's a difficult one to, to say. It's a conundrum because you want, you want to grow your business. But it will become overwhelming and the next thing you know, you are stressed and working too many deadlines. So that is something to think about as your business grows. Take steps to quote properly. We have other knowledge nuggets that you could take a look at explaining step by step on how to quote properly. If you don't grasp the art of quoting, you could end up spending too many hours on a file for less money. There's tons and tons more pros and cons, but these are some of the ones that are near and dear to my heart that come to mind when I think of the positive and negative sides of being in business. Okay, I must say something here. And this is a very, very important piece of the success of your company. Your skill level needs to be at the top of your game. You can't grow your business with clients if your skill level is not superior to the rest of the pack out in the field. Accountants will not refer their own clients if your skill level is substandard. It is unfortunate, but that is what's happening here in Canada, and I know it's happening in other countries in the world. So if you are a great and accurate bookkeeper, then you shouldn't have to worry about finding clients or receiving referrals from professional accountants. Skill level alone will give you a quick step up to the plate. And it doesn't mean you need to know everything right away. No one knows everything. Even after 30 years of me bookkeeping, I don't know everything. All you have to do is be open enough to learn, ask questions, and do some research. Next on the list, think about learning to become versatile. When we owned our own business, I couldn't say no to a referral, even if I didn't know the industry or the accounting program that was being used. I just learned it quickly as possible, asked questions, and dug in deep to the process. Knowing multiple programs and processes will mean you can pick up a variety of clients that come your way. Many other services can be offered at a higher hourly rate, which gives you a bigger price point and profit margin. Some of these are knowing as many counting programs as you can possibly learn, budgeting, debt load management, you can offer controllership services if you have the qualifications, project analysis, forensic bookkeeping, program conversions, cleaning up and fixing a file, and the list really goes on and on. Versatility and diversity will make you different and that is important to finding clients. What I'd like to do with you now is share you a story that happened to us a few years ago and why I want you to think about being versatile. So the call came in from an accounting firm who referred clients to us quite often and there was a company in another country who did approximately $800 million in sales. They were all over the world except for Canada and it was time to open up in Canada. So the team was being put together uh, 
to get this started and we were asked to be part of the bookkeeping team. So we went in and said yes, even though I didn't have any idea how this industry works and I had no idea how to use SAP. Very huge, expensive program. It was all remote access, all linked back to the head office, and all countries had to use this program. There was no such thing as switching them over to QuickBooks or Zero or Sage 50. It is what it is, and I had to be the one learning this. So what was very interesting, I, of course, had support in the training, not only from the other country, but from a controller in the U.S. as well. So it was always a good timeline when I needed to uh, ask questions. But it was interesting. What I got out of this for the five years that we had this client was a learning experience, not only on an accounting program, but how a very large company works. And I take that experience and I move it or pieces of it to my other clients. And that's what you learn when you try and be versatile because you just keep on learning. And also, more and more accountants will see this, see that you have special skills or extra skills, and next thing you know, the referrals keep coming. So that's something to think about by knowing more than just one program and one bookkeeping system. Selling yourself, honestly, a smile and a good handshake goes a very long way. Also, an upbeat, happy tone to your voice, listening well, and speaking with confidence gets your foot faster in the door. So first impressions are everything, and I think you've known that or heard that a lot in the business world. When it comes to bookkeeping, the client needs to know from the get-go that they can trust you and that your skill level and knowledge is going to keep them safe from government auditors. But most importantly, their information is going to be kept confidential. So this is where you need to shine. Dress well, but you don't have to overdress. Take notes in your initial meeting and ask professional questions. For example, what are your needs? What is your budget? And what are your current issues? Asking questions makes the business owner feel important. Also, in the initial meeting, you must ask questions yourself to ensure the client is a good fit for your company. As for competition, when you first start out, you need to do a little research on who is already out there in the field with a bookkeeping business and how close are they to you. Check out their website. What services do they offer? More importantly, what services don't they offer? This is a great way to find out what your niche could be and offer services your competition doesn't sell. What does their website look like? Is it professionally created or homemade? You want to aim for your website to be superior than your competition. Remember, business owners have already looked at you well before they make the first phone call. Your website is their first impression. Let's discuss the business strategy. Personally, I don't like using the term business plan. It isn't a plan, it's a strategy. And strategies mean you set your goals for the first few years and you do your best to follow them. But really, nothing ever is true to a set of steps. You're gonna have to learn to dodge up and down and sideways and tweak away as things happen during the course of your first few years. Here are some items I want you to think about when you're starting your business. First off, what is it going to cost you to start your business? So we're talking your computer or computers, one accounting software or multiple accounting softwares, and are you gonna go on the cloud or are you gonna stay on desktop? What about your logo, your website, and your business cards? You do need to consider certain types of insurances, what about the cost of networking and whining and dining some people and office supplies in your office? And if you're going to be more extravagant, you can add to that list. The next thing is you want to consider, do you have enough money to pay the bills while you find clients and until they pay, pay their first invoice? That's going to be important that you have money socked away uh, personally or you've put money in the business to keep your overhead going while you wait for money to come in. You do want to take a look at your expectations for sales the first year 
and how you're marketing and how you're meeting people, do you think you're going to meet those expectations? If you want staff, you want to consider building your cash flow equity so you can afford them in year two or at least as soon as possible. So you do want to look at your plans for year two, three, four, and five. Where do you want to be in a few years with your business? I also think it is important to get this down in writing. It doesn't have to be too formal, but if you want financing from a reputable bank or a government institution, then you will have to put your strategy in writing. There are numerous business plans, oops, strategies on the internet to choose from. Now for the fun stuff. Let's talk about marketing. The first thing I want to mention to you is you are the best marketing tool, not an expensive marketing plan. When we owned our business, we didn't even have a brochure until year 10. For some reason around year 10, I felt that I needed a brochure. We had a beautiful one designed and we ordered a thousand brochures and I swear there's still 950 still sitting in the filing cabinet. Marketing is about you, your personality, your skill level, and your professionalism. That is what gets you your clients. It's that simple. Next, let's talk about your website. You do have to have one. In this day and age, you have to have one. Because it is your online calling card and it is a potential client's first impression of you. Like I've already mentioned, check out your competition's websites and make yours better. Separate yourself from the rest of the pack by elevating the design of your website. You can Google search other accounting and bookkeeping professional websites. Which ones do you like and which ones do you dislike? What colors appeal to you? What font is your favorite? Pictures? Always have pictures. iStock has amazing pictures to spruce up websites, so most certainly use this service. As for your company logo and name, first off, Sandy's bookkeeping service is quite dull. It's very bland and it doesn't stand out from the crowd. Go for a few walks. Think of names that are fun and creative. Make a point to have three favorites. The reason is, is when it is time to register that company name, you don't want to be disappointed if it is already taken or number one is already taken. So have two and three at the ready if you can. As for your logo, be creative, and when you pick the final design, ensure you're going to like it for a very long time, as a matter of fact, for approximately 10 years. Changing brands every few years confuses the public and hinders your marketing visibility. So like your design. I don't recommend you do this yourself. There is a science to branding. Find a designer within your budget and let them put the science to work when it comes to design and color. That professional is worth his or her weight in gold. By the way, don't cheap out either. You know the saying, you get what you paid for? Your brand is your marketing tool. Make it good for the next few years. Now, I just mentioned something about registering your business. Once you have your ideal, wonderful business name, it's time to register to the government, and I believe it's mandatory in all countries. But another reason why you're registering as well is you're registering the name so no one else can use it. So once you have registered your business name and you have somebody working on your logo and your website, it is time to find a tagline. And this is a small short phrase that defines your business. So what I want you to do is go to our website, the Fiscal Integrity website. Also go to the Holst Equation website and take a look at each picture. We've put a tagline to each one of those. These are important. Google search other sites and you will see most companies using taglines. Again, it is all about the marketing side of the business. Last on my marketing list is your elevator pitch. You will be thinking of joining some networking groups such as BNI, which is worldwide. Or you may visit some local networking meetings and that means you're going to need an elevator pitch. When people ask you about your business, they will lose interest and tune out very quickly if you are long-winded and your sales pitch is unorganized. An elevator pitch is about streamlining your sales pitch to be short and to the point.
If you were on an elevator, you should be finished by the third floor. Far too often people have surpassed the 15th floor and still haven't finished. So here's the scoop on this. Jot down the most important key points that you can say about your business in 30 seconds. What makes you different? What are your strengths? And what makes you different and a superstar in the industry? Now we're coming down to the final steps in getting started. And I'm sure some of you have already done these steps. But the first two here, the computer and the accounting program, I'm really talking about your production equipment. So when it comes to your computer, a laptop is preferable if you choose to travel to clients in their offices. But it doesn't matter whether it's a laptop or a desktop if you're working from your home office or a storefront office. I'm also not sure where you live if a PC is still more widely used than a Mac for accounting. You will just have to make that decision for yourself. Almost the same with accounting software. You will also have to decide which is the most popular accounting software depending on where you live. Here in Canada, and I believe in the US, Intuit or QuickBooks products are most widely used. We also have Sage 50 that is popular here in Canada as well, and I believe it may also be popular in the US. Of course, there are many more programs out there. Currently, we have Zero making its mark in Canada uh, this past few years as well. When it comes to insurance, all I can say is get it or at least look into it. We have an entire knowledge nugget addressing why we feel that you need insurance. So enough said here. Go listen to it and I hope you will make the right decision to cover your assets. Now on to our final topic for this webinar, and I'm sure for anyone listening in, you probably deem this as one of the most important topics of this webinar, and that is how to find your clients. I even bet that this is the biggest obstacle you have when making the decision to go into business or not. And I get that. This is the scariest and toughest job at your startup point. It's scary because you need to make money soon enough to pay your personal bills tough because people have to learn to trust you and that takes time. So that's the game in a nutshell. The best advice I can offer you at this point in time is to join a BNI. That's Business Networking International. You can find these guys worldwide and in every city. As a matter of fact, there's many chapters in each city. These are weekly breakfast or lunch meetings where the entire chapter will find people to refer to you. Of course, you will do the same once you find more colleagues. Now, this isn't forever, but it is a good start point. You can also join other local business networking clubs or visit other business meetings. Because it is about people meeting you, seeing your bubbly personality, see confidence with what you can do, and this will give them a good feeling to do business with you. As for brochures, cold calling, and internet marketing, it is not as strong as people meeting you face to face. That's the fastest way to earn a trust factor. Too many times brochures are put in the garbage. Cold calling is wasting people's time and internet marketing can be deleted very quickly when it comes through on email. Having said this, LinkedIn and Facebook are great tools to let people know you are ready for business. Learn how to do these properly. There is a proper etiquette you need to understand when using Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. There you have it. That's the basics of getting started in your own business. I hope my advice gives you the power to get up and get going. All I can say is, if you really want to do this, then take a very big, deep breath, put the fear aside, and go for it. Make that jump. We're here to help you. We're here to help you grow, and we'll get you where you need to be. Fiscal Integrity Group your home for the advancement of bookkeeping and bookkeepers.